The second station, Jesus receives his cross. Having been condemned to death, Jesus is forced to carry the cross to the place of execution. It's heavy, the sun is relentless, and the path he had to take is stony. The journey had to be made with haste to get everything done to comply with the religious law. As if crucifixion were not enough to bear, Jesus also had to suffer rejection, humiliation and the abuse of the crowd. We would not wish this on anyone. Yet it is something fundamental to the Christian life that we are asked to take up our cross and follow him. But how could that be appealing to anyone? What sort of loving father would invite his children to suffer in the way Jesus suffered? Surely his suffering and death were meant to save us and were born on our behalf. As it says in the hymn, there was no other good enough to pay the price of sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven and let us in. Our Heavenly Father is not demanding of us what he asked of Christ. There are some who have suffered pain, torture and yes, even death, rather than betray their belief in God. However, not all of us are called to that path. Nevertheless, the call is still made for us to take up our crosses and lay down our lives for his sake. Reading again the parable of the sower, we find some of the seed falls on the roadside or amongst the weeds. It lands on rocky ground and the harvest is therefore not very plentiful. We know this is also true as we try to sow the word of God. There is a massive number of preachers and teachers proclaiming God's love throughout the whole world. But the response could never be really be called a bumper harvest. Our world does not always see God's way as the path it wants to follow. We can think back to the horrors of the Holocaust and be shocked that anti-Semitism survives today. We can judge the treatment of the Uyghurs in China, which has been described as a modern genocide, as being in utter contradiction to the will of God. We witness examples of racism or abuse of children and women in our own society. Discrimination and inhuman treatment are just so evident in today's world. With the advent of social media, we know that raising our voices against these things is likely to bring us abuse. Such abuse causes many to keep silent. But does not this point to a way in which we can fulfil the vocation of taking up our cross? The cross is the sign of the depth of God's love, and it is his love we are being called upon to reveal to the world. We are expected by God to stand up for the oppressed, for the enslaved, for the hungry, the poor, the sick and the dispossessed. It may make us unpopular to do this, but listen again to the words of the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is how we are to live accepting our cross and following him. It's not a, about being called upon to suffer unendurable sickness and disease, but to be healed. The degradation of even one human being is a blasphemy. The second station, Jesus receives his cross. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this Easter tide of the second year of the COVID, I pray that you will help me into a new understanding of why the events of Good Friday unfolded as they did, and not just a better awareness of what actually happened. You had to suffer rejection, humiliation, and the crowd abusing you. I pray that you will help me to inhabit your story and experience a new depth of understanding for myself, the reason why. There was no other good enough to pay the price of sin 
he only could unlock the gate of heaven and let us in. Amen. Lord Jesus, St Paul preached Christ crucified and urged his followers to take up their cross. I pray that you will help me to discern what that means for the church and for me personally in this generation and in these days of pandemic. Soften my heart to the news of suffering and persecution and guide me to do what I can to shine your gospel into these dark places. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.